Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together this morning to study your word. We thank you for another day of life. Good night's rest. And as we take up this study, we ask for the presence of your Holy Spirit, uh, that we can correctly understand these things that you're opening before us as your people at this time. Uh, please let the, the study be edifying and strengthening for all that will partake of it. In Jesus' name, amen. What I was saying yesterday is I got sidetracked from the direction of the study because Emmanuel, after two studies ago, brought up the question about whether we can line this history of 1863 to 1989 up with midnight. And his conjecture, conjecture at that time was that this middle wave mark would be 1888. And uh, at that point, it didn't click on my mind. Later, it clicked on my mind that we've already put this in place, that there's a 63-year a period, a 63-year period. One thing that I wanted to... This isn't a big deal. Maybe it doesn't mean anything. But in this particular structure, this is 126 years, or 126. If you take that nine out of it, you can see the 126 there. I don't know that you can do that. Um, but we, I use that as a segue to try to show that if we're going to treat these time patterns, whatever we call them, the way we do all the other prophetic symbols that we need to bring them together line up on line and accept the light that each of those lines individually contribute to the whole. And my argument is, is that the point of reference for these lines is midnight, because that's where the prophets, Sister White speaks of in the visions given to Ezekiel, Isaiah, and John, and you can connect that with uh, Isaiah 6, where he goes into the, the sanctuary and is humbled in the dust. This would, this would speak to, if this history is the opening of the sanctuary, um, Isaiah, when he sees the glory of God, um, and there's a comment in Spirit of Prophecy, um, where you can show that part of the glory that he's seen in there was the history of 1840 to 1844. That's not all. He saw his character, but you can show that um, she identifies that the glory he saw too was that history. If this is Isaiah going into the sanctuary as well as Ezekiel, then you have the, the, the lesson, the theme, the, the thought um, that what we understood about coming to November 9th was incorrect, as I think we've understood um, by now is we were expecting that everyone had their character settled by November 9th when it arrived, one way or the other. But the story of Isaiah coming into this experience, if we're going to use the other prophets, uh, Daniel and Daniel 10, uh, at one level, this would be the three touches, one, two, three of Daniel. And it's not until over here where Daniel is strengthened. And therefore, Isaiah, Sister White has a comment that when Isaiah comes in and he sees this glory of God, that before that he was unconverted. She doesn't say it that way. Um, she says, now he sees that he is guilty of the same sins that he's been condemning God's people of in the, pr the previous chapters of Isaiah. So <clears throat> this isn't a history. Midnight isn't a history where you come um, already perfected. This is a history where you get perfected. Okay. Um, as illustrated by Daniel, Isaiah. And the argument I'm making is that by using the prophetic applications that we have used all through this, these 30-some years, um, we can take the other um, chiasms of 63-63. I'd even go further. This, this allows us to take other chiasms that aren't 126 and plug them in here, but we're just starting here, um, and bring them together line upon line. And we started doing that yesterday. Um, this is the, the one that uh, we started with because it's, it's based upon these two 2520s, if this isn't too cluttered for you to see. And this would be 1863 over here. 
this is Isaiah 7. The 65 years allows us to see these two 2520s. And then when we get to 2005, uh, the articles by Hiram Edson are discovered. Hiram Edson doesn't know the full implications of what he's teaching, but he's arguing that the 2520 is the hidden key that opens the increase of knowledge at the time of the end. And of course, he's speaking about 1798 in his time period. And what was the, the Bible reference that he uses for this mystery, the mystery of the Bible that he's saying is the 2520 that is the hidden key? Colossians 1.26. He didn't see that. Okay, and then in 1863, uh, they set aside the two tables. They set aside, they begin to set aside the Miller's jewels and Miller's dream kicks in. Uh, Miller's dream right here is where they begin to cover up his jewels and 126 days later, 126 years later, brings you to 1989 where the book of Daniel is going to be unsealed. And in this history, Miller's jewels are going to be restored and shine 10 times brighter than the sun because his original jewels shone as the sun. So how we get locked into this, to this prophetic application is, is pretty broad and pretty thorough. Uh, it's hard to shake. And, and we've been dealing with the principle now for several months here. Um, ever since Emilia, or Emiliano, ever since Stephen and Odilia were here, uh, the Lord emphasized in that time period that we're to make our choice about what we believe based upon the weight of evidence. And the weight of evidence uh, of what we're looking at is overwhelming. Um, hey, you know, from 1798 to 1863, I didn't know this, but it was 65 years apart. No, 1798 to, to 18... 1863. Yeah, you didn't know that? No, I mean, I don't know. You, you, it's the reason significant. You, the reason you should know that because um, it, I don't, it doesn't show it over here perfectly. But in Isaiah 7, it's a 65-year time prophecy, and Isaiah does not specifically mark the ending point, but the ending point is 677. That's 677. So you have 65 years here at the end that have to be repeated down here in this 65. Oh, yeah, I did that. Right, yeah. Okay. Um, that's... And I'm telling you... Everyone needs to understand that for themselves. This here, this is, these, these 2520s are where, in 2005, where we begin to be broken out of not just Adventism, but self-supporting Adventism. This confronted all the other, uh, the culture of Adventism that wasn't directly connected with General Conference began to be confronted with what we were teaching about the 2520, and all, almost all of them turn against the 2520. And there's a variety of arguments that they use, um, but they, it was complicated for them because um, we, we were taken well beyond even what the Millerites understood about the 2520 very quickly. The Millerites, there's, there's many things that we saw right away that the Millerites didn't see. So this is a separation process that's been going on. Separation from Adventism at large, separation from the, the very, uh, some of the subcultures of Adventism. I'm talking about self-supporting work. And then we come into the history where this movement begins to be separated in 2014, when the Omega begins in 2014. And then this history here is where the final separation is accomplished in advance of the Lord lifting up an ensign. So, Back to what we're, we're dealing with. Um, we looked at this 126-year chiasm in Samuel Snow, the Millerites history, the Midnight Cry. Um, and we, we see Islam at, at each of these waymarks um, telling us that when we plug this 163 in here, one of the wheels within the wheels is Islam and this is the history of the Midnight Cry in the Millerite history. So it's speaking to the Midnight Cry message at the end of time. 
Um, this was, I take that back. This, I'm saying this was Samuel Snow's. This was the second Italian camp meeting, sorry. Um, to, but it, it, the, the way marks in 2018 that give the 126 are also speaking to Islam. 9-11, August 11, October 13th. This is Samuel Snow's history here. Um, two witnesses to Islam. And we've been amplifying how these, these dates, these numbers, dates, numbers as symbols uh, are getting a multitude of second witnesses, second, third, fourth, fifth witnesses. Um, and then it, what, I, what I did here was instead of running the 126 and the 126 and two 126 in our history, that when put over the top or below the 225 20s have the identical characteristics. This is the end of the first 2520 from Millerite history in 1798, and it's the time of the end. And the first 2520 in our history, which is a 126, ends in 1989, which is the time of the end. The second 2520 in Millerite history ends with the apostasy of 1863, and the the second 126 in our history ends with the apostasy of the Omega beginning. Okay, so it, it's, and, and if you caught it, um, here is where the apostasy of the Omega reaches its climax. All right, you follow me? This, this midnight. When you get to here, you have September 7th, which is a Sabbath, so you have 977. You've got Jeroboam's rebellion. You've got um, Gideon's group going from 10,000 down to 300, which is leaving 9,797. Um, so you, you've got the conclusion of the Omega here. And we, we showed why this was also 1863 yesterday. So if you consider this line here just running, I didn't plan on doing this, but if you do it this way, you'll see that the Omega here in 2014 when it began, it lines up with 1863. You follow my, my point? The, the end of this, this history here would be this, 2014, but from here on, you're going to have this this period of time that's represented by 1863 from 2014 and we've seen how many steps are there in this apostasy? Three mud puddles. Three mud puddles, okay. Got one mud puddle, two, three. So you, this, this omega apostasy isn't a point in time, it's a period of time. And we mark it as beginning in 2014 when the first people that were involved with this movement for the first time from inside this movement, they begin to reject this message. Brother Larry? In 1863, we know that they made the chart, 1863 chart. Yes. Could we call that like a visual test or not a test or something visual? Because in, now in our line, they put on the pants thing as their... Yeah, why would you do that? I, I'm just trying to see. I was thinking in 1863 they had this false chart, and so. And so, where do you get? What are the charts? No, no, no. Just one. The, the false chart. Okay, but what are the charts? What are these two charts? The visual test. What are they? The old past. The, what are they? The uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. They're two tables, aren't yeah, they? Yeah. What were they typified by? To uh, uh, test to Ten Commandment tables. Okay, and when Moses was given those two tables, and he comes down off the mountain, what do you have going on in the valley below? You have an image of jealousy, an image of uh, a golden calf that they're dancing around. Um, so, and this is repeated, doubled in the time period of Jeroboam, because that's a midnight cry. So. These two tables were counterfeited by the 1863 chart 
um, which was the golden calf of the story of Moses and Aaron. It's the two golden calves in the story of Jeroboam. Um, so their rebellion is typified by the image of jealousy because that, the golden calf is a symbol of the image of jealousy, the first. So, yeah, it, it fits perfectly. But it's a, it's a period of time with three mud puddles in it that begins in 2014. I'm just wanting you to see that this period of time is 63, and it comes to right here, which we showed yesterday, is 1863. How did we show that? By putting this 126 in here, that begins in 1863, and ends in 1989. So September 7th was 1863. And 977, among other things, I pointed this out with Trump, it symbolizes what? What, it, what did I say about Trump yesterday and 977? Number of days. To what, and, uh, yes, that's the number of days from when he declared he was going to run from president for president and when he won the nomination was 977 days. And what was my argument? And I'm pretty sure it's valid. That's where the Civil War began. That history, when he comes out in the public and says, I'm running for president, when he wins the nomination, liberals and conservatives in the United States are forever separated. They're not coming back together. And in 977, as much as anything else, it's a separation between the 10 northern tribes and the two southern tribes. So this is a separate, 977 is a symbol, among other things, of separation. So when you get to here, it, this, this is the conclusion of, eight, of the apostasy of the Omega, represented by 1863, represented by the 1863 chart, represented by the golden calf, or the two golden calves. <coughs> These two, the new movement and the old movement, have been separated. So 977, they were, they, that's when they literally separated the, the 12 tribes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yep. And, and, um, so what Larry was saying is just before this, 10 days before this, we should also remember this, 10 days before this on August 29th of 2019 um, is when they had their visual test. And they said so. This is our visual test. You, the women put on the pants or they received the mark of the beast. And that's... That is a, 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 a specific, I mean, a waymark that's nailed down because it's exactly 220 years after the death of the Pope that was taken captive, and it's 10 days. Uh, all right. We got something going on. But that's me talking. I know, but it's, it's a reflection. You're good. You're good. Go ahead. Okay, my voice was circulating through the ether world. All right, so we're plugging these 126s in. <clears throat> what I'm saying, and, and what you need to think through, whether it's valid or not, what I was getting to down here, is that <clears throat> even though this 126 and this 126, they don't run concurrently. One starts 25 years after. But as symbols have more than one meaning, so we have the prophetic authority to take a singular 126 and plug it in here and take this as a singular 126 and plug it in at the same place. That's what I've done down here. It's a different symbol now, right? This makes this 1888. Okay, in 1888, was there a separation? Yeah, was there an angel that came down? The angel of Revelation 18 comes down, so the, the Lord is seeking to uh, do a, a, a glorification of his people, Jones and Wagner. Does, but then then that, <clears throat> that makes the 977 of 2014 too, then. It makes... Not, yeah, well, I get what you're saying, just so everyone else gets what he's bringing up, if you take this 126 that begins in 1888 
and goes to 2014 and plug it in the midnight chiasm, then at, at a surface level, it seems to challenge every other things that we've said. But what I started with is symbols have more than one meaning. So the question he's raising is we've shown that 2014 in the past, more than once, is 1888. Why is 2014 1888? It's a 126, and Jesus is going to illustrate the end from the beginning. But what we've said about 2014, and what we've said here today in a different way, but the same thing, is this is where the Omega apostasy begins, and it's three mud puddles. So this here is a history that's at one level focusing on the Omega apostasy, so you would expect that if this is 1888 at the end of this history, that you should see 1888 at the beginning, the same way that you see 1863 here and 1863 here. Okay, so, so yes. Uh, between 1863 and 1989, you have 1926. Refresh my memory, what is that 1926 representing? Well. Where we got sidetracked by Emmanuel the, a couple days ago is he, uh, he, he wanted to plug this 126-year history into the Midnight Chiasm, which you can do, but he hadn't seen the year 1926 at this time, and he, he was conjecturing that the middle point would be 1888. And I, and I told him at that time something like, well, that don't line up. Okay, from 1863 to 1888 is 25 years. It'd be 25 years followed by 121 years, and the chiasms are perfect. What we need to see is 63, 63, and we did the subtraction that very day, and I said, you need to see one, 1926, and, and we raised the question, what happened in 1926, and it didn't click. until When I got home, it clicked on me. I remembered what 1926 is. So 1926 is the center point of this chiasm, and we have this up here for a different reason. I'll mention that in a moment. But this, at one level, this 126 years is identifying the rebellion of Adventism, Seventh-day Adventism, that begins in 1863 and ends when they're passed by in 1989. And the center of this chiasm is 1926, where they implement a policy decision called the 1926 Working Policy, number 75. And in that, they, they say, anyone that professes to promote Jesus will work with. That's, a, that's my paraphrase. And I used an example of the name of the Jesuits. Their official name is Society of Jesus. So when you take the public position that all you have to do is profess Jesus and we'll work with you, in 1926, Adventism took a very dark turn. Okay, And, and in, in conjunction with that is, a, is one other element that is probably the most important element to really having confidence in this application and it's this, and, I, and we started here the other day. The 2520 from 677 to 1844 is essentially 2520 years, period. But the 2520 that begins in 723 and goes to 1798 is two periods of 1260. The dead center of that 2520 is 538, and therefore it produces an answer to Daniel 8, 13, how about how long would these two desolating powers trample down the sanctuary and the host, and paganism was going to do it for 1260 years, and papalism was going to do it for 1260 years. So this is the 2520 that is illustrating this 126. So we should expect, we may be, it's okay for us to see in this 126, this division in the middle, and it produces the same thing, sort of. Here, it says from 1863 to 1926, the problems of Adventism 
were caused internally by Seventh-day Adventists. But once you reach out to Rome and apostate Protestantism for guidance on your theological schools and your medical colleges, now the problem is external. So you have this history of this 126 divided into two, two periods, one with an external desol internal desolating power, one with an external desolating power, and although it's reversed, that's the same thing with this 2520. First an external desolating power, followed by an internal desolating power because the papacy professes to be Christian. And then we plugged in the history of 508 to 538, the transition from paganism to papalism, which was 30 years. And we said in this, it would be okay if we've seen a, 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 sim, a similarity there, and we do. If you go back seven years from 1919, it takes you to the beginning of the third generation and Prescott's book, The Doctrine of Christ, where he takes the prophetic message of Adventism out of the, the, the understanding of Adventism, and he does it through uh, higher education, through theology that came from Rome, which leads to this, okay, this is, the, this is the internal resistance being removed, and there was resistance, there was warfare going on in here as they're trying to change these doctrines, while they're trying to remove the daily, uh, I think it was Brother Dwight yesterday brought up, their, they're trying to reach out for the Catholic definition of the Godhead, they're doing all kinds of stuff, but once you get to 1926, you're at the midpoint of this 126, now you've got external influence that's bringing Adventism down. That answer your question? Thank you. Okay. Um, so they so they really went into apostasy in 1926, full full fledged, in union with the apostate Protestants and Catholicism. Crazy. Yeah, and you could, you could document that. It's in this history here where where they begin to seek accreditation of their schools. Okay, and. Uh, that was a, a downhill slide once you did that, um, and it's been nothing but a, a snowball effect. Because they were getting money from them. So what I'm saying is, what I'm doing, uh, and where where we were at, and then Clayton brought up the question. Let me add one more thing. I'm taking this 126, and I'm saying because it's a 126, I can plug it in here, and therefore this is 1888, and Clayton said, well, we already have 1888 back here in 2014. Just so we're clear, we have 1888 here at 911. Don't we? Not, 1888 is one of the, the most important points of references for 911 because Sister White repeatedly says, that the message of Jones and Wagner is the, the angel of Revelation 18. Okay, and we put the angel of Revelation 18 at 9-11, and we go in and we show this is where the Laodicean message began, and then we go in and we show that Jones and Wagner were bringing the Laodicean message. So, 1888 is at 9-11. 1888 can be recognized in 2014. 1888 can be recognized on September 7th, 2019. Is that a problem? Is that a problem? Have Symbols have more than one meaning. And what's, what's your responsibility? To be students of prophecy and to understand, I don't know. To rightly divide. Rightly divide, right. This is, this is more or less a, a curiosity of mine. Going back to what you were saying a few minutes ago about the papalism, paganism, paganism thing, papalism. okay, and that's which. I've always, I've wondered for a long time if that history, that transition from one to the other is, has been, and maybe is at the present, being repeated even in our time. Yeah, that's what the United States is doing. United States was Protestantism and Republicanism and its 
doing away with that in preparation of placing the papacy upon the throne of the earth. We've taught that repeatedly. Yeah, I, I, that I understand. I understand. Are that. you talking about in this movement? Well, either one. Either in this movement or in, like, the history of the U.S. Uh, I'm just trying to conceptualize that on the, on the line myself. It's yeah, kind I'm, of a side issue, but... I'm sure that's happening. Um, it, 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 I'm sure that's a valid application. Okay, so if we can take the 126 from 1888 to 2014 and the 126 from 1863 to 1989 and line them up with here, here's where we got to yesterday, then I'm saying that these other periods of times could be could get plugged in here. I may have made it more difficult for you to follow the logic because I started in 742 and went to 723 and, and, I, and the 19 years. This is 19 years here. And that may have made you wonder. It, what I could have done maybe for you to get my point was saying, get it easier. We should be able to take 723 and go to 538 or 723 and go to 1798. If I would have said 723 to 1798, you would have said, oh yeah, I get that because that's 1863 to 1983. So if I would have took 723 and 1989 and put it over here first instead of this 19, maybe it wouldn't have been as difficult to conceptualize. But let me, let me show you something. Another 19 on the other side? Mm -hmm. Yes, Where is from it? 1844 to 1863 is 19 years. It's, a, it's perfect, okay? It's perfect. But let me show you something that's, that everyone knows um, so you can get my point before we go back to this. You should know this because this is the foundation and central pillar of Adventism. 457, what begins in 457? 2300 years and it ends on October 22nd, 1844. But how many prophecies are there in this period of time? There's one that is here, there's one that's here, there's one that's here, and there's one that's here, and there's one that's here. One, two, three, four, five. Is that correct? No, 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 no. I'm saying how many, you can plug a lot of history in here. I'm saying how many are specifically addressed in Daniel 8.14. Is that, is that right? Is that how you f follow it? Yeah, you're you're going to say yes? Six. I should have said six because I have six written on my chart. I just skipped one. Okay, so the, the, the reason that I asked that is you've got 49, year, 49 years till the streets and walls are built in troublous times, right? And correct me, I think this is 408. Okay, 49 from 457. Then you have the baptism of Christ, yes, 27. The cross, the stoning of Stephen, and 1844. So that's one prophecy, two prophecy, three prophecy, four prophecy, five prophecy. But you also have the prophecy of the 490. But wouldn't you count 457 itself? Uh, yeah, if you, 457, if you want to make it as the end point of the three decrees, yeah, you could go, you can go way back into history. But that's not my point. Here's my point. We should all understand this as Seventh-day Adventists, and we should recognize that in the past, we have already taken this period of time and treated it as a singular prophecy. And we've taken this period of time over and over again and treated it as a singul singular prophecy. The one week. The one week. So, do you get my point? Is it We've already dissected the 2300-year prophecy and taken the individual prophecies that exist in there and then use them line upon line. We never have restricted ourselves to say, no, all we can do 
is used to 2300 days. There's only one prophecy there, there's just one. So what I'm saying is, that's justification for over here. We should be able to take the 742 to 723, if we can find a second witness to 19, and say, okay, this is a prophecy uh, that can be applied all by itself, and we gave you the second witness to 19 yesterday. What's the second witness to 19? The kings of Israel, the northern kingdom. There were 19 kings of Israel, uh, beginning with Manasseh. Was Manasseh a good king? Manasseh was a wicked king, okay? Um, and he is the only king in the Bible that is directly identified as making an image. They, maybe all of them did it, but the only king in the Bible that is specifically rebuked about making an image is Manasseh. Why would I, why would I make a point about that? Because as you look at Ezekiel 8, he's the symbol of the image of jealousy. Okay? He's a symbol of many things. And he's a wicked king. Is that the kingdom? That's the northern kingdom. Uh, this is Manasseh up here, put it, beginning a counterfeit worship service in 977 after the kingdom has been divided. Why am I making... That isn't Manasseh. This is Jeroboam. I'm sorry. But this is who... I'm getting ahead of myself in my mind. This isn't Manasseh. Who is it? In 742, who's the king that's the subject? Ahaz. Was Ahaz a wicked king? What did he do? He built a counterfeit temple in the courtyard. Okay, so what I'm saying is these waymarks begin to line up wicked king Manasseh Wicked King Ahaz, wicked King Jeroboam. Okay, if if you're going to test them, why why would we put Manasseh here? What what prophetic justification would I have for putting Manasseh in 742 when the wicked king in 742 is Ahaz? Because he's the beginning of 19 kings in the northern kingdom, from Manasseh to who in 723 to Hosea. Hosea is the 19th king. But Manasseh wasn't king of Israel, the northern kingdom. Who was Manasseh king of? Judah. So who's the last king in Judah? Zedekiah. Zedekiah. Okay, so Zedekiah is lining up here with Hosea, but they really weren't at the same point in history. Why could I put Zedekiah here? Because Manasseh is the first, uh, because, not Manasseh, Jeroboam II is the first of 19 kings of Israel. And the last is Hosea, and the last for Judah is Zedekiah, and therefore the first would be Manasseh in this line, if I can bring other witnesses to this 19. And so I'm starting with the 19. The 19 here is what? It's two things. What are the two things? The amount of, of uh, kings. Yep, in Israel. And How many of the kings in Israel were good kings? Only that one guy. Only that one. There was no good kings in Israel. The Bible never gives any praise for any king in the northern kingdom. They were all wicked. They all followed in the footsteps of Jeroboam. Okay. These are all wicked kings. kings. And this is... The 19 years. Oh. Okay. No, so our justification for grabbing this 19 as a symbol and bringing it down here, I've given you one witness. I've given you the 19 kings of Israel to establish this witness here. Don't I need another witness? Shouldn't I have another witness? Where's the other witness? For 19 Republican presidents since Abraham Lincoln? <laughs> yeah, that'll work for me, but that's not the one I'm looking for. That's that would a good be. One. That's a third witness. That's great. Mm -hmm. but there's one more integral to what we're studying here. 1844. 1844. 
1863 is 19 years. This puts 1863 here, 1844 here. Is this a valid application? It, it's, it's taking this 19 and this 19 and plugging them in here. That's what we do with the 2300 year prophecy. So, I mean, it may seem strange or like, a, like we're trying to stretch something, but we've been doing this for years. Okay, so we've been doing it with the 2300 year prophecy. It's okay to do it okay for this. Is it okay to do it for the, with the 2520? That's the 2520. They're the same prophecy. They're the same prophecy in Daniel 8.13. When it says, how long shall the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation tread down the sanctuary and the host? The sanctuary is the 2300, the host is the 2520. You can't separate them. They're the same prophecy. So if you can do it for the 2300, you're required to do it for the 2520. Right? Okay, so what else could we do then with this? We should be able to take 723 to 1798. 723 would go here. 1798 would go over here. What else should we be able to do with 723? 723 again to 538. Isn't the 1260 a prophecy? Okay, that's, that's this right here. Is this in singular prophecy? From 27 to 31, is it a singular prophecy? What happens in 31 AD? Yep, that's 1260. It's right there. What happens in 31? Christ confirmed the covenant. He was crucified. He was put in the tomb. And he was resurrected. What happened in 27? Same thing. Baptism is the crucifixion and resurrection. The beginning is illustrating the end. This is a singular prophecy. So for us to take this week, this 2520 days, in this 2300 year prophecy and divide it in half and select out that 1260 as a singular prophecy is identical to taking 723 to 1798 as one line confirming the covenant with one for one week and then dividing it in the middle from 723 to 538 right so down here in this history you have 538 1798, 723, 2014, 622 BC, October 13th, 2018, 1989. Is that overkill? What is that? That's the wills within the wills. And when do the wheels within the wheels get opened up? When you get to here. So you should expect to see that. What, what is, what we taught, what, what was taught, once these two tables became present truth in this movement, from the very beginning, I recognize something, and I, I've consistently put it in the public record. Sister White says in the Great Controversy, that there are two passages of scripture that the pioneers recognized that led them to produce this chart. What are the two passages of scripture? Habakkuk, oh, yeah. Habakkuk 2. And uh, is, uh, is Ezekiel 12. Ezekiel 12. Okay, and when, when we when we seen that, I, I immediately I said, okay, for Millerite history, it's both of them. 
It's Habakkuk 2 and Ezekiel 12. But for Millerite history, it's really Habakkuk 2 more than anything else. And that for us, it's Ezekiel 12. And what is the expression in Ezekiel 12 that we have used repeatedly to justify that claim? This here is the end of Adventism, and it's the effect of every vision. When you get to here, now you have the effect of every vision, the wheels within wheels. Now this, they're together. They're speaking together. If this is so, it is, but if it is so, then what is it speaking to? To me, what it's speaking to is right here, something is being put in place. The wheels within the wheels, but I can't, I can't say it too directly or you'll get it too easily. What is happening with the effect of every vision and the wheels within the wheels being brought into clarity in terms of 1863? Uh, no? In terms of 1863. Oh. What happened in 1863? Because remember, this is the Omega. This is all about 1863. This history here about this rebellion uh, for this movement and for Adventism. So when this period gets to here, it's the conclusion, the separation between the two movements take place. Adventism has already passed by. You've been, the division has taken place. Is that the closed door? Prophesy again. Prophesy again's there. You're close. This is the restoration of Miller's jewels. The, and his jewels are represented on these two tables. And they were set aside in 1863. So when you get to here, you have the wheels within the wheels. You have the effect of every vision. And you have... What do you have? You have the dirt brush man doing what? Casting the jewels back into the casket. And they're ten times brighter than the sun. So, over here we would also have... Uh, this, is, this sometimes people... Uh, correctly, they stumble over it. Uh, uh, so you may stumble, I'm giving you fair warning. You follow that I put 742 and 723 into this midnight chiasm here to here. And then you follow that I went then to 723 to 1798 and I plugged it in. 723, 1798. And then you follow that I cut it in half and went from 723 to 538. 723 underlined for a second time, 538 here. But I'm also going to do something where sometimes people stumble. 538 to 1798. From here to here. Yes? So what else should be up there? That is a 1260. Yeah, it's, it's even more it's more easily recognized in 19 years. This is 1260 years. But what else, what other piece can we cut out of this? 508 Yeah, you can, put, you can put 508 to 538, the, the relationship of those 30 years, but that's not what I'm looking for. 723 to 677. 1798 to 18... 44. Can you, can you do 1798 to 1844? Can you do that? Okay, so that's 46, and there's 1260. What would, if, if you can do that, what would that be teaching? 
then you then you could put 1989 building of the temple the building of the temple 46 years so what's happening from here to here the building of the temple the establishment of the temple now what what did you say about well i mean if you can put the time of the end there you could put 1989 there too then I mean, if, if you're doing that, that's the same. In 1989, you're just stepping outside of the, I'm just saying, if you're the thought process I had going on. So where, where do you take it to? 1989 to where? I just thought that was a 30, but I... 2019, I don't know. I mean, 2019. How many years is that? 30 years. It's to right here. It's to this very point. 2019. This is this is one that that nails it. These two time of the ends, you know, you can line them up on top of each other. What verses? What verse are they found in? Verse 40. And if you go, so what would that tell you, in terms of here? That this is 30. It's the priests. But let me ask you a question. Does that mean that 46 is 19, is 1260, is 126, is 30, is 3? Is, is 30 three, is thirty in this history? Where? Well, right here. Right here you have 300. Right here you have 300, don't you? Gideon, right here at 9-7. How many steps in here? One, two, three. Okay. Um, how, how many months was Elizabeth in hiding? Five. Five. And when does Mary come visit her? Six months. You got 30 days in here. Okay. Three, 30, 300. I think there's even a 3,000 there. But a 1260, do you have a 1260 in there? Yeah, it's 126. 19? Does that mean they're interchangeable numbers? Does a 19 represent a 30? And a 30 represent a 46? Yeah. Okay, anyway. Um... You follow the logic? Yeah. Okay, what I was saying yesterday, I'll say it again as we get out of this. The chronology and the numbers are amazing. Some of us don't have the aptitude to easily grasp them. But we're required to do so. Why are we required? One of the arguments you've had, we've had in this movement for 30 years it's one of the ongoing arguments is the people, they look at this message and they say, this is too hard. The, 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 the message of Christ is simple. It's supposed to be simple and easy. And then you go in the spirit of prophecy and she says, you're going to have to strain every fiber if you're going to be among the 144,000 studying God's word. There's nothing easy about it. You're required to be a student of prophecy, rightly dividing the word of truth. And there's illustration after illustration. How do you understand the illustration of the path to heaven to where every so often they're, they're, they're leaving the wagons behind and they're leaving the horses behind, they're leaving all the, the luggage behind, they're finally taking their shoes off. What is it that, that what is being illustrated there? Harder, harder. harder and harder. It's a struggle. And when you finally get to the, where the path is so narrow, you're going sideways and you're looking at the face of a cliff in your, right in your face and you know the cliff's behind you. What's all over that cliff? Blood. Blood from the people that have went there before you. So there's no way that you, you go on this path without straining yourself. So I'm saying you have to come to grips with the chronology and numbers. You may not have to have it perfected as someone that has a, a mathematical aptitude might have it, but you have to have it perfected to the point to where you can recognize these, 
these lines and understand what they symbolically represent. That's step two. Okay, 1863 to 1989 represents a lot of stuff, but you can understand it if you, if you force yourself. You can say, okay, well, this is, this is our 2520 against Israel. It's divided in the middle. And the 2520 against Israel had two desolating powers, internal, external. This line has the same. Okay, you can understand that. Once you understand what that 126 represents, then your responsibility is step three. To bring it to the point of reference and allow, you, allow the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to show you the connection. How this will connects with this will, connects with this will, connects with this will. And we're running out of time. Or are we? Are we running out of time? What? It's the exact same thing I said though about July 18th. What about July 18th? You've got to know it for yourself. Got to know it for yourself. Mm -hmm. But you got to really know it. Okay, what, 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 let's talk about July 18th as we close here. I never got to the notes, it'll be the same notes tomorrow. Um, what's going to happen on July 18th? Several things. Several things, okay. Let's, let's hear them, Brother Larry. It seems like you have them in the forefront of your mind. What are the several things? It will be a, obviously an attack, suddenly and unexpectedly. Okay, July 18th. Sudden. By Islam. Attack. There will be a. By Islam. By, uh, impetus to the, the king of the south. Closed door. Islam and the King of the South, Clayton Sane. Are you going to buy that? What? And the King of the South? Say it again. Islam and the King of the South. Islam and Russia. Yeah. Okay. And what was the... It's going to add impetus. To the movement. Uh, uh, lifting up. A lifting up. Uh, uh, lifting up. I'm referring to the Levites. For Levites. You never said the one word that no one wants to say. I said closed door. A closed door, okay. Is there a closed door there? Yes. What did you say, Daniel? What word did you say? There's something you... Pardon me? The that's that's the... That's, the they the said the lifting up was the inside. Okay, here's what's been left out so far. A missile? Atomic. <laughs> well, I don't... It wasn't an attack by the COVID virus. Yeah, that's what I meant, obviously. Yeah. I, I know, we want to put it in. What else? Okay, we got a sudden atomic attack against Nashville. We even have the plays. We have the date. Elijah's sacrifice. Pardon me? It's Elijah's sacrifice. Elijah's sacrifice. It's 1840. You might be able to put in there also the Lord's sacrifice. Lord's. What else? What, what 1840. 1840, uh, I'm going to put over here. This history of Josiah Litch's prediction is typifying the lifting up of this movement. Glorious manifestation of the power of God. All right, yeah, glorious manifestation. What else happens? There's something else that happens that is probably more significant and the least talked about. What about the Revelation 18 angel comes and returns? Pardon me? What about the Revelation 18 angel comes down again? Okay, an angel, angel descends again. What, what, how does Sister White define the angels? It lightens the whole earth. Lightens the whole earth. That's how Revelation defines it. The way yeah. Sister White it's identifies the angel is the angels symbolize the message that the people of God give. Okay, so it's, it's, a, it's a symbol of the message proclaimed by God's people. There'd be a Sunday law. Okay, it's Sunday law. That would be, I mean, I, I agree with that, but that would be, I, I'm, 
expecting it to be before that, sometime before that, but it's, it's included in the same time period. I, I okay, so know. we'll put that in quotations. You're not getting the one well, that I'm after. Oh, no, no, no. Is there any others? There's, there's, there's something that has to happen on July 18th that has been witnessed to over and over and over again in the scriptures. I can think real quick. Noah, Elijah, Christ, Millerites, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Jonah. Uh, um, Moses, Elijah, Noah. What is it that they all have? Nebuchadnezzar? That has to take place. The Millerite. A disappointment. Yes. 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 A disappointment. We know so much. But is there going to be a disappointment? Yes, there will be. There has to be a disappointment. Why? Because we're... We Was Noah disappointed? Yes. How, how is that illustrated? The seven days. Yeah, he thought it was going to happen on this day, and it didn't happen for seven more days. Um, was were the Hebrews disappointed? Yes. Where? The Red Sea. The Red Sea. What was that dynamic? Warfare. Okay, brother Clay. Well, it, it wipes out though. If the disappointment, the date's wrong, it wipes out a couple of those other ones, in my opinion. If the date's wrong. It wiped those okay. out, some of those. We're the gone. end. We're the end. Okay. We're the end of a beginning. Where's our beginning? Our beginning is the Millerites. It began with the movement. When did it cease to be a movement? 1863. But it ends as a movement. Yes? Okay. So, did they have a disappointment? When? In 1844. Okay, the great disappointment is what we're talking about. Were they wrong on the date? No. Does Jesus illustrate the end from the beginning? Yes. The date we have is, is probably the most secure element we have in this discussion of the disappointment based upon beginning and end. They were right about the date. The whole history of the Millerites is how the Lord leads them to get the exact date. And he gave two witnesses of Josiah Litch's history, Revelation 9, which was about Islam, and Samuel Snow about the midnight cry. Okay, so the Millerites, is, it's not a minor thing about them coming to the correct date. It is a major element of the beginning. And so here we are at the end the date to me seems the most secure. But what about Noah? The lifting up and all those other things just go away if the date's wrong. Mm -hmm. they, 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 nobody would buy anything then. You're just well, guessing. even if the date's right, if nothing happened. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All of those go away. I mean, it's your the sacrifice doesn't happen, and so you're laughed at. You're, all of those don't work then. Know was Noah laughed at? Yes. yes. Before? For how long? Seven days. He was in that ark seven days and they were partying down. Before, not after. Them. Oh, they was, he was laughed at before, but the laughter stopped when the animals started getting on the ark. Right, that's what I'm saying. And then the ark closed and it didn't rain and they're, they're, it came they, back to they them and back. They're, they're rejoicing. Was his time prophecy incorrect? No, was not incorrect. Yeah, it was. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. What was his time prophecy? It was 120 years. It hadn't marked a specific day. So when he gets in that ark and he's in there seven days, he's still in the same. He's in, still in the 120th year. So his his time prophecy was correct, but there was a period of time where the people around him were being tested. Okay. When it comes to July 18th, 2020, everybody needs to remember this passage from Great Controversy. There's about a 
paragraph. What's the page number? 409, 40, uh, and, uh, 409 to 410. But the appointed time had passed, October 22, 1844, and the Lord had not appeared. The believers knew that God's word could not fail. Their interpretation of the prophecy must be at fault. But where was the mistake? Many rashly cut the knot of difficulty by denying that the 2300 days ended in 1844. No reason could be given for this except that Christ had not come at the time they expected him. They argued that if the prophetic days had ended in 1844, Christ would then have returned to cleanse the temple by the purification of the earth by fire, and that since he had not come, the days could not have ended. To accept this conclusion was to renounce the former reckoning of the prophetic periods. The 2300 days had been found to begin with the commandment of, of Artaxerxes for the restoration of and, and building of Jerusalem went into effect in the autumn of, of 457 B.C. Taking this as, and she explains all, all of that. She's explaining what we're doing here. Yes. Okay, we'd have to reject all of that to parallel them. Exactly. So, so what you brought up was time and interpretation. Yes. And the time was correct. And the people that the people that stayed on board in the Millerite history stayed on the right track. They held to the time. They said the time is correct. If, if we're going to reject the time, then we have to reject everything from 1818 when Miller comes out until 1844. What, what was incorrect? The interpretation. I would think if that were going to be a di disappointed, it's probably somewhere in that realm. Yeah. Um, I think that's kind of where I started when, I mean, how I sidetracked, I guess, um, where January 11th is now 1989. And if January 11th is 1989 from the study, then July 18th is 1840. And if July 18th is 1840, there's no misinterpretation of 1840. That's a prediction by Josiah that actually comes to pass. And then 1844 is after July 18th in that scenario. Whereas July 18th, in my understanding, there's, there should be no disappointment there because Elijah's sacrifice is definitely taking place and then he has the seven times where he prays for rain. That's kind of his disappointment after the sacrifice. Yeah, but what you're describing I don't think is any different than what, what we've been teaching. Is because we would say yeah. 18, 1844 is the Sunday law, the Sunday law, and July 18th is the first Sunday law. Yes? Jeff? Uh, Noah's prophecy was 120 years, which is a 12, right? So if you take July 18th and go 12 years down, it touches July 31st. Could our time prophecy about July 18th be a seven day, so to speak, period where Noah's in the ark and July 31st actually be the date? The date for what? The, for the fire event to come in down. Nashville. For the fire to come down. You're, you're, you're dealing with. So, so that would mean the event in Nashville, if December 31st, no, July, 31st. July 31st, oh, okay, I, I, wasn't, I, I wasn't following you. The other date that is also July 18th. Correct, correct. Okay. Um, so July 18th is still a valid date. July 31st is simply Noah but, in the ark for seven well, days. Yeah, Noah in the ark for seven days. And then the strike and then the comes. Rain. The strike comes, which is the fulfillment of all that. Okay, so our disappointment would have been caused by what? Picking the wrong date. Time delay. Wrong, it'd be the wrong interpretation. Oh. To, Time delay, yeah, but it, we're, we're saying that the strike on Nashville comes on July 18th. Exactly. That's our interpretation of the facts. So the event, it's still the same event. Yeah. Uh, just 
by what you're saying. Same, same date, just a different. We're we're not changing the event. We're just changing the date. If I do that, I don't think you're changing the day. I'm sorry. The other way around. Yeah. Right. No, no. I, what I'm saying is, is you're identifying that the day is a valid way mark, but it has a different application than what we've put on it. The application that we've put on it is that that's when Nashville gets struck and the door closes, but you're saying, no, that isn't when Nashville gets struck. That's when the door closes, but you're in the arc for seven days before Nashville gets struck. So it's a, it's, the date is still valid. July 18th, the way that you're expressing it, is when Noah and them get in the ark and the doors close. It's still a valid way mark. The date is still valid. It's the interpretation that we're putting on it. And we haven't bought into this yet, have we? we we're just, this is discussion. <laughs> we haven't bought into anything at this point. I would just add that, um, I, mean, I, I mean, maybe I, I'm gonna stand on July 18th firmly, for now at least, but I was, I was talking to you yesterday about Daniel 5.25 which is the 525 after 718, which is a testimony that that 525 should be there. It's many, many take what you farsen, which is the 126, which is the 2520. And then we've seen in Genesis 525, the 525 there, that was uh, Methuselah said he was 187 when he had a child, which is the, the 187, which is the 718. So I think the 525 stands based upon what we were at. And if the 525 stands and the 252 before that stands, I, I feel like I believe that 718 after 1989, January 11th, is 1840, and I don't, I don't think it's going to be a disappointment. I don't think a disappointment is associated with July 18th. That's just my inter. That's how I am now. I don't, I don't think there's a disappointment associated with July 18th. But that's just my faith. I would say that's my faith. And I wasn't doing the the 25, the 252 on the side of the 525. We can do that with the 273 as a, as a Levite. But I was just saying at 17, 718, 2020, that whole 525, I think it's, I think it's testified by Genesis 525 and Daniel 525, which is the many, many take before yeah, and the hundred. People have put that, that, that both those verses in there in the past. So you've got, you've got the, the numbers of Daniel 5 and you've got Methuselah which is speaking of, of a missile that's sent. And, and 7 times 18 would times be, 20 is 2520. And would the disappointment not have happened November 9? How many disappointments were there? Two. two. No, two. I guess you can see. Mm -hmm. In this scenario we're laying out, this is the first disappointment. Mm -hmm. What happened in the first disappointment in Millerite history? They went looked at everything. They went After they went and looked, but what happened at the disappointment? The numbers. The numbers, you're almost there. The separation between the two classes took place at the first disappointment on April 19th. Mm -hmm. Was there a separation between two classes in this history? Yes, there was. Okay, this is first disappointment language. Okay, thank you. But it was also the, the but first disappointment comes well after 1840. Also, the sacrifice of the of the prophets of Baal. Then that that idea that idea and the disappointment ideas are contrary to each other. Because Why? if that's the first sacrifice of Baal, then Elijah's sacrifice is definite. But if it's a first disappointment, then a second disappointment is definitely to come. So it's almost like uh, if those things two things are parallel, I don't. I that's my. I would just say I'll, I'll withhold for now. What's the disappointment? What's the problem with the disappointment? Is that the disappointment in the Millerite time period where both disappointments were for God's was, people? Was Elijah disappointed? Mm -hmm. Yes. Immediately after the prophets of Baal were slain, was Elijah disappointed? Yes. yes. Yeah. But if, but if Elijah's sacrifice is 718, he's not disappointed. And he's not disappointed Why? when the prophets of Baal are trying to call their fire down and there's no fire. He's happy then happy at his point, and then he has a disappointment. The disappointment of April 19th, 1844, wasn't a disappointment so much about a wrong date. They are already figuring out that 1843 
wrong before they got there. They were already studying that out. The disappointment of 1843 was the separation of the two classes. And that first class then turned on them. But, but where does the first disappointment come before or after 1840? What do we typically, what do we typically, if this is 2019, what's the most commonly referred to that 1840 typifies in our history, more than any other application? Islam. Islam, but... Nine eleven. Can I add something to that? So now here I'm saying that if 1989 is is now back in effect again, 1989. If we could establish that way mark and January 11th, that that's a 1989. We did 2020 minus 31, 1989. We see from this graph with the 126 is 1989. So if that's the case, then we have a, a prophecy of Islam before one. 111, January 11th, we have a prophecy of 911 before our 1840, just like the Millerites had the 1299, the 150 year prophecy of Islam that happened before the history and one that's going to happen in their history. We now have 911 that happened before the 1989, that's the 111, 111. We have that is 911, and then we have one ahead of us that is a prediction that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get that logic, but. And I don't have a problem seeing this as 1989 with the increase of knowledge on Daniel, but if you're going to make it a time of the end, is this the time of the end for us? I don't know, that's what I was thinking. That's what I was for, Or for the Levites. Or for the Nethanims. Anyway, we'll have to take this subject up. This is something, of all the light that we're, we're grappling with, this to me is the... The scary one. Yep. I've always thought that too. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, the scary might not be the right word, but... Humiliating. Uh, 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 it might be humiliating. Uh, it might be a relief. But uh, my argument, what I want to put in place here is that I don't think the time that we have the... the even with the story of Noah, Noah's time was correct. He didn't have a month and a day. He had a year, and in that seven days is still in that year. So if you're going to use Noah, Noah as the first reference to the 144,000 last reference, I, I don't even think you can use that to discount the time. The disappointment on the at the cross, the cross was perfect timing. It was a misunderstanding by the disciples. Um, it's interpretation that's going to produce our disappointment. If it is a disappointment, you don't just stop and, all right, we're, we're going to keep moving forward. So, well, what he yeah. read in Great Controversy 409, the faithful, they can't turn away from this. you got to keep moving forward. you got to keep moving forward. Just, oh, I'm done. done. I yeah. mean, you can because then you're... The majority of them did. Yeah. yeah. Out of, what do you mean the majority? No, 300? <laughs> you know, right? Yeah, it's still, it, it, there can be a majority of ten. Okay. Uh, Jesus would come down for one. They still move no, over, but he won't. <laughs> yeah. Different subject. Yes. Minor point, maybe, maybe not. But really, Mo, I mean Noah was given a date. Okay. What I mean by that, yeah, he was given 120 years, but he was not given a date at the beginning. But then in verse four of chapter seven. The Lord says, for yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And where's he at when he tells him that? He's in the ark. Yeah. Okay, so Come thou in all thy house. Forward. So he has a revelation, a more perfect revelation of time once he's in the ark. Uh, but what I'm saying is when he went into the ark, there's, he was disappointed. And then the Lord spoke to him. What justification do I have to say that he was disappointed? The, uh, the number seven. Yeah. yeah. Because Elijah's disappointed. He's prayed seven times. Nebuchadnezzar's disappointed. He heats the furnace seven times. Jesus 
the disciples are disappointed at the cross, and he's in the tomb on the seventh day. October 22nd, 1844, the Sabbath is opened up. The number seven is always there illustrating disappointment. So I don't know what Noah's mental state was. And even if the Lord right there, then and there, at his disappointment said, you got seven days, would that be outside of the history of Hiram Edson? When did the Lord open up the truth about October 22nd, 1844 to Hiram Edson? The day, after. the day after, the next morning, he's walking through the cornfield. He said, here's what happened. You guys were wrong. Not on the time, but on the interpretation of the event that took place at that time. Yeah. I don't want to call it a misapprehension. A misapprehension. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the light that you're opening, but we acknowledge we have a work to do with, with coming to grips with some of these elements of numbers. And uh, we have a work to do to, to be certain about how we're applying these things. We don't want to be misinterpreting things. We ask that you give us the grace to see things exactly as we're supposed to. We pray that as we approach these dates that are coming, uh, that you'd give us wisdom to rightly reflect your character, uh, that we might be that ensign that we speak about that is addressed throughout the scriptures. We set before you this day's activities of each of us and ask that you'd bless us in whatever uh, we take up and protect us and bring us back here again tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen.